Uh, a little bit of work ahead uh, tonight still. So uh, I'm really excited to be able to uh, uh, kick off our second uh, public uh, meeting forum uh, for zoning uh, related issues here in the city. Um, this is one where um, there's a, a really great opportunity, uh, again, for the, the public to get involved and be able to, um, you know, uh, leave us with your ideas and, and really be able to help us shape um, what this looks like um, for the future. Uh, and so just to, to kind of start us off to make sure that we're all here for the right meeting. Um, so tonight, um, and we're going to go ahead and um, talk about really two um, major issues. Um, we're going to talk about um, the, the role um, of the planning board and consolidating and updating um, the roles uh, of the planning board under its, under its current structure um, as one area of topic. And then the second one um, is to really be able to look at how can we uh, streamline the, the historic um, and uh, heritage um, and, and cultural um, areas of our zoning code um, into potentially one commission um, type format uh, to be able to, 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 to discuss and, and to handle those issues. Um, and so, you know, these issues are, are really important to me um, for uh, making sure that our city is doing the best that it can to, to not only, um, you know, preserve our, our history, but able to also um, help move um, forward with helping to revitalize and restore um, our community um, in, in many of the, of the different neighborhoods where um, we're starting to see more and more revitalization and um, uh, an opportunity to help um, preserve uh, some of these uh, historic um, buildings and, and the character of the neighborhoods. And so um, with that said, um, I'm going to turn it over to the chair um, of the, the zoning subcommittee, um, Common Council President uh, Jim Noble, who's going to say a few words um, and then um, we'll officially uh, get started um, for the evening. Hi, thanks uh, for coming everyone. Uh, I, I just want to, uh, just a little background, this is something we've been working on over a year now for this uh, zoning plan. And I, um, I just want to mention some of the members that are here this evening that sit on the board of this uh, review committee. Uh, Tom Collins here is a member, Tony Arkelevich, Tom from the Building Safety Division is a member also, and Wayne Platt's back there and myself, I, I act as the chair. Uh, I just want to uh, introduce our uh, consultant who's going to give us a PowerPoint about what we've uh, looked at this and it's kind of an informational type of uh, meeting so you have uh, the ability to write any kind of uh, suggestions you might have or anything you want to see changed or anything you want to be more uh, discussion on whatever you can let us know. So. Um, with that, I just want to introduce uh, Dan Schuster. He's our consultant, and, and he's along with Alex Alan uh, Sorensen from uh, Schuster and Stewart uh, Group. So, uh, are you ready to come up, Dan, now and uh, give us a little? Thanks, Jim. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I won't be long up here with just a brief introduction because the purpose of this evening's meeting is to provide an opportunity for people interested in zoning in the city and in particular the two subjects on tonight's agenda to be able to sit around the table and talk about what's proposed and see if there's agreement or other concerns that need to be addressed in terms of the drafts that have been prepared and made available to you. Tonight's meeting deals with two subjects, the historic cultural and design review process. Uh, Kingston's fortunate in that it's, it's got a lot of historic areas, design, uh, concerns and cultural institutions and wants to protect them and preserve them but in a way that is workable and as efficient as possible. 
the comprehensive plan, which was adopted uh, over a year ago, included its specific purpose is to, or, or objective, to simplify the regulatory programs and protections to ease processing of development approvals involving historic resources. Currently, there are a lot of pieces in the puzzle and they don't always fit together the way they should to make the process as efficient as possible. There are four historic districts in the city, two of which are uh, state and nationally recognized, two of which are city districts. They are regulated in large part by the Landmarks Preservation Commission. There are three separate design districts, one in Uptown, one from Broadway, and one along the Rondout Creek. Each one has different design standards and is administered by a different agency, one by the Heritage Area Commission, one by the Landmarks Preservation Commission, and one by the Planning Board. And although the standards are similar, they're not the same. As a result, in some cases, and I'll show you in a minute, uh, not sure quite clear how clear that that map is but it illustrates all of the districts that I've mentioned and in numerous cases more than one district overlaps the same area which creates confusion in terms of the review process uh, designated historic districts, uh, Fair Street and Chestnut Street. There's the Stockade and Rhonda Historic District, which are National Register districts. They are overlaid by the heritage area, which originally started out being called the Urban Cultural Park, which is a state program and it provides for additional provisions in terms of uh, review and administration and in those areas it's sometimes unclear as to whether the agency administering the historic district or the heritage area commission or both have a review function uh, and in addition to that there is the design districts which overlap both. On top of that, there is I can't see the boundary too well, but the city also has an approved local waterfront revitalization program which is part of the state's coastal management program and it has its own ground rules uh, and requires review for consistency with state and local coastal policies. That's, which is a determination made by the Heritage Area Commission. The bottom line is that there tends to be confusion and, and in some cases overlapping of functions. which I guess I've just about covered with what I'm talking about the map. Uh, other than the fact that to bear in mind there are other agencies which are also involved in a process. The, uh, the state and federal government have an interest in the designated historic areas and their protection. The New York St the, uh, State Historic Preservation Office is part of that. 
and the New York State Department of State administers the coastal management program, so there are relationships between those agencies to be considered as well. What's being proposed is, is a consolidation of the two agencies, of the two local commissions, the Heritage Area Commission and the, Pre the Preservation Commission, to one nine-member commission, which would assume all of the functions of the, of, the, of the two agencies which exist now. The functions, by and large, would be exactly as they are today. There would be some reorganization of how they're spelled out to try and make it clear, and there are now four different sections in the city code which deal with those areas. It will now be consolidated uh, into one section which establishes that one commission and its functions, and then the detailed standards and operations uh, will be included in the zoning law. Okay. That's basically covers item one uh, of tonight's agenda, and you'll be hopefully have some discussion as to whether there is agreement with that approach uh, or whether or not uh, there should be other options looked at. The second item on the agenda is also a, uh, a recasting and reformulization reformula of uh, existing functions in a way that's easier to understand and to allow the uh, people to understand how the planning board functions. Currently, planning board functions are distributed in three or four different places in the zoning law and also in several other sections of the city code. What's proposed to create a separate section which consolidates those functions uh, of the planning board in the same way that the functions and purpose uh, of the Zoning Board of Appeals now appears in one section. This will be one section uh, under that would deal with the planning board's functions. It would make one additional change to make operations in the, in the, in the plan for the Planning Commission more uh, efficient and to simplify procedures and allow speedier review of certain kinds of projects by giving the planning staff the ability to approve certain smaller scale projects that very often are perfunctory in nature but take because of the established time limits in zoning law months rather than weeks so the and it's the material that was posted online, you see the planning staff would have the ability to approve those small scale projects without the full planning board reviewing them. However, anyone who disagrees with the staff's conclusions could appeal to the planning board and go through the procedure as they presently do. That's basically this, the two subjects of uh, tonight's meeting. I, what we're going to do is break down I, this two, three tables set up. We're going to assemble eight or 10 or 12 people at each table. The idea is to have a discussion and find out what you feel about these proposals and how the city should, prepare, should proceed to implement them. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna start, we have, like, like Dan said, we have a few different stations. Um, just by a show of hands, um, I know that there are a lot of members from both the Heritage Area Commission here this evening and the HLPC. Can, so can I see just a show of hands of the Heritage? 
Commission. Okay, and then the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Okay, and the rest of you are general public. Um, and so we are going to start with splitting you up between these two tables. There's not a whole large audience this evening, so hopefully we can conduct this at both stations. Uh, so if you want to move forward, there's going to be one person at each table that's going to be a note taker, and then there'll be some of us around the tables to answer questions. This is a public, it, it's a public information gathering meeting tonight. No decisions are going to be made. All comments can be forwarded to us at a later date in writing through my office. That's here at City Hall. Uh, the information is posted on the website. I will be posting the uh, PowerPoint as well on the website. Any questions? Okay, then let's move forward. they can then proceed to the Article 78. The current language allows the zoning board to hear appeals of hardship that if uh, an uh, applicant is denied by the commission, the applicant can then apply for a hardship uh, situation and then if they're denied again, that would go to the zoning board of appeals. This language here seems to eliminate zoning board's role in this. Um, current language, uh, commission rules against an applicant. It doesn't really say what happens in it, just a straightforward application and not a hardship. I believe it would just indicate in the language that you have to go to this Article 78. We had talked in the committee of various options for a regular appeal on a regular application. Going to, we left it, my memory serving, to a local body. I don't recall actually putting Common Council in there, but rather a local body. Uh, and this is just a regular application, denial, not a hardship. We can talk about whether the hardship would still go to the zoning board, just on a regular application, commission denies it. You go have the applicant go straight to Article 78, which involves attorneys and court and all that. I think the committee really didn't want to see that happen but by the majority. There were some members who did want to see that go straight. But the words I still remember were the appeal would go to a local body. We haven't defined what the local body is, but no disrespect to Jim, I don't believe it was the common council. That wasn't the intent. I was confused, which is always a, always a possibility. <laughs> how we can ensure that we don't lose the benefits of that, which include federal tax credits for rehabilitation and state tax credits for rehabilitation for anyone who wants to go to the districts that are um, And I'm also interested in how existing zoning law, yeah, how form-based it's going to end up being, and what kind of sensitivities um, within form-based zoning will be sort of um, written in for historic preservation of existing neighborhoods. Um, better guidelines for design for residential communities, for residential projects, for commercial projects, and for new construction. My name is Emily Flynn. I'm the leader of Light Friendly Kingston. So, of course, I'm very interested in bikeability and pedestrian uh, ability. Um, I am concerned about a 
I know that this is not what we're talking about now, but I'm concerned about I want more density in our city so that we can walk and bike places. And I'm especially concerned with this idea that some places might need a certain number of parking spaces for that development to happen. I'm not saying one way or the other, I'm just saying that I'm concerned about that. I'd like to stay on top of it. And I'm here to listen, of course. And what route is I am. Um, the topics on the agenda, is it okay to address both of them now? So, um, I know from the city comptroller's presentation of the budget that um, ta uh, property owners are the biggest revenue uh, stream for the city of Kingston. But when you take uh, what you're calling small scale projects out of the public forum of the planning board purview um, and bring them into an internal and non-transparent process within the planning department, you're essentially taking away and disenfranchising those stakeholders um, who are funding the city. So I don't know that administrative site plans of new residential development of three or less units and um, existing residential development of three or less units, new commercial development up to 2,000 square feet. You know, these don't sound like replacing a window or like adding a porch or the things that were actually discussed during the committee meetings that I attended. Um, so I'm a little concerned that it's not really fully explained what a small scale project is and um, it could be decided by the planning staff without the public ever even hearing about what's happening because uh, there's no public meeting. So that's a concern of mine. Um, and also, I, I agree with Mr. Davies and Ms. Melvin about uh, concerns around the consolidation, mostly in terms of the fact that one commission is advisory and the other commission is regulatory. Um, I think that it would be a, an incredible disservice to the city of Kingston to lose our regu regulatory commission. And I'm wondering how that's going to be handled when you're reviewing something that does fall into both categories and it's one commission. Is it going to be regulatory or is it going to be advisory? Um, and um, the CLG funding, how is that going to be affected uh, if you don't take into consideration the regulatory authority of the Historic Landmarks Preservation Commission? So I'm curious to hear uh, what is going to happen with those things. Five people or say one? Yeah, I don't think it should be new council. I think that's a I am in favor of taking common council out of that. What about the language that was eliminated? The application and the zoning board support of such commission action that that implies that the zoning board has it. so we would keep that language or current language out and the where are you now to he's on page seven after the preservation notice of action application the current language says okay. and the zoning board support of such commission action which implies the zoning board heard an appeal concurs with the commission and now it's going to go to the common council. I just assume seeing that language stay out and the zoning board support and just say within 30 days file a written appeal to the preservation or the established appeals board. Established right. appeals board. Right. 